Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, Forget to Clean Up, Find Everybody Gets Free Cable. We fast forward to 15 years ago. Details are fuzzy, and names change to protect the innocent. While railroad ties and vandals are not involved like the previous story, it does include the evil empire, EE, Cable Corporation, Margaritas and a padlock. Pre-children, PC, my wife and I purchase our first house. We were very excited to be homeowners. We were particularly proud to show off all of our gardening and yard skills we have developed over the years of childhood chores. Don't tell mum, but who knew that seemingly punishment of yard work would actually translate to adulthood. We are off to a great start with a meticulous yard spending way too much time and money. On my small suburban lot is the utility box for one of the two cable choices in the neighborhood. Along the EE Cable Corp, you know the one who Forbes always lists as one of the worst companies in the country. I come home from work one day and notice the utility box is open and the cables are filleted all over. I did not think too much of it at the time and made a mental note assuming they are on a break. The next day, I come home from work and the utility box is still a mess. I called the Evil Empire Cable Company to kindly let them know that they left a mess in my yard after a repair. They told me nicely that they will be out in the neighborhood the following day to finish the work. Many weeks come and go without them fixing their mess. It was coming up on our first pool party and we wanted the house to be perfect. I call the EE Cable Corp again. Not to bore you with the details of the conversation, but ended with a rude ending that they will be out there, eventually. Now I am I seeing why nobody likes this evil empire cable company. At our first PC pool party, maybe after a margarita, or four, we start aimlessly discussing the evil empire cable corp. Now we are a bunch of engineers, and a truck driver, important later, drinking margaritas, the discussion turned from complaining to scheming. While poking around the utility box and the box on the side of my house, we notice that this EE Cable Corp does not use multiple line blocks on the cable. They merely hook up the cable from the house to the utility box, easy peasy nice and easy. I am guessing the lack of security is a genuine artifact of Midwest nice. Why protect something that nobody steals? We also notice that there is only one house of the eight that is serviced with cable. So we proceed to hook up free cable to the seven remaining houses. We neatly stuff all the wires and close the utility box. As I mentioned the only non-engineer in the group was a truck driver. An earlier pointless discussion was about different padlocks and why truck drivers use a specific round kind. Basically so that it is impossible to break with small bolt cutters. He grabs a large round padlock out of his truck and we try to place the it on the utility box. It won't fit, hole is too small, so a few seconds of drilling, we now placed our own padlock on the EE cable core. Utility box along with seven houses with free cable protected by an industrial padlock designed to prevent trucker theft. After meeting the other neighbors and making sure they are trustworthy I let them know about our party. Each one smiled and began enjoying free cable. A number of months later, enjoying free cable, the EE Cable Corp is in the backyard staring at our handiwork. They bend over regularly really studying the padlock. I can only imagine their discussion on what they are seeing. They bring out the bolt cutters from the truck, I assume they carry them if they lost a key or padlock is rusted. Now looking at the bolt cutters, I can tell this will be a futile exercise. After only about 3 minutes, they both shrug their shoulders, get back in their truck and leave. That was the last time we ever saw the EE Cable Company. Since all but one of us was enjoying free cable, there was no reason for them to be out there. Our gig was up when the one who did pay for cable, who we never really met, moved. The next technician was very dedicated, after three trips each with a larger bolt cutter, resulting in using one more than four feet long, put everything back to the way it was before. And thus concludes the story of seven houses enjoying free cable for more than four years because the laziness of a single technician and a rude customer service rep. The next one is titled, My Demotion Included a Pay Raise and Three Months Paid Vacation as Revenge. A little background. At a finance company I was once at in Miami, I was in upper management for a long time and it was recently sold. Now I had been at the company since almost the start and I had created my department that I managed from nothing and ran it smoothly for years as the company grew over time. 
one of the other upper managers in the loans department actually became the CEO of the company after the sale. No big deal, we were friends so I thought it would work out great. Boy was I wrong, what ended up happening is he started firing or demoting most of the upper and middle management, taking away perks and decreasing pay. I was demoted, but I had enough knowledge and connections in the company to know this ahead of time. I also knew they brought in a guy to replace me, paid half as much, no finance background. I also knew where they were going to move me to in the company, to a much, much lower position. The CEO became very greedy and just seemed to hate everyone at this point. That is when I got a plan that would benefit me nicely on my way out on my own terms all the while my greedy CEO thought he was demoting me. Since I knew all of this, I was able to get a new job lined up, but I had a lot of vacation time left and so I wanted to take advantage of this. Since they had no idea I was planning on leaving. I submitted a request for a three months vacation to Europe. Now this vacation was three months out from now and so it was approved. They soon started having me train this new guy to assist in my department, which I knew exactly what they were doing at this time. I also knew he was in no way able to run this department, so I just trained him anyway. I could have said something about him not being qualified, but I am sure my jerk of CEO knew what he was doing, right? Well this new guy wasn't able to grasp or really understand what I did. Performance of my department slipped dramatically, as my department was a giant mess with this guy trying to run it. And me basically taking a backseat for laughs. Fast forward about two months later, one month until my vacation, next, they moved into a new department. I hated it, but I knew if I played dumb and said I needed training, even though I knew what to do, I would get trained and have to do little actual work. That meant shadowing another guy all day and really not doing much work myself at all. All the while the guy who took my old job was dropping the ball like crazy and they had me go back in his department to help out once and while. Which, when they had go to back to my old department, I again played dumb and said that since the new guy was running it, I would just follow his lead. Which was a huge train reek and he had a huge backlog of work. Then I went on my vacation, they are in no way prepared for me to leave and I simply turned off my phone for 3 months. And then I returned from my 3 month paid vacation. My department is in flames, the new guy is almost ready to get fired, so greedy CEO calls me in his office and asks me why I didn't train him enough. At this point, my plan was complete, or so I thought. I simply said I quit and this is my two weeks and walked out with a smile on my face. I still showed up for work the next day, for my last two weeks, but greedy CEO says I can just go. No problem, I leave and head home. However since my department is still in flames, and this point very difficult to fix and the backlog of work is huge, CEO calls me and asks me to help train this new guy again. For triple my hourly pay, since they now know no one else can handle this and they have limited time. Wow, a nice pay boost for a few days. Great. I stop in the next day and do absolutely nothing. However three days later, CEO says I can just go, again, and they don't need me. The next day I get a call and they really need my help and offer me even more pay to come in for my last few days and help again. Hey, money is money. Again, I stop in the next day and do absolutely nothing until my two weeks are up. All the while getting a huge pay increase for my last two weeks. I moved on to the new job I had lined up, for double my pay and a better position. All while my old company seems to be going under. The next one is titled, Mess with myself or my friends and I will ruin your reputation. Backstory, in need of work I asked around to my friends and then found out through a good friend of a mine that there was a place opening up ideal location and industry for me. I had lengthy chats with the owner of this new franchise that was opening up. I had more business experience than him. So I brought them up to speed and went above and beyond helping him out before I was even employed by them as long as I was guaranteed a job. This was a franchise job that was based around commissions I would earn based on clients I would pull in. The job was supposed to start at the beginning of June. I had other commitments but I started shuffling all of them to fit around this job because at least situation wise it was perfect even if the wage was average. June comes around and I'm still waiting to hear from the owner. Nothing. I chase him up and get told the franchise is not going ahead. Three days later it's suddenly going ahead again and so it's all stations go from the end of July. Fair enough delays can happen with new businesses. Owner is worried about leaving his high paying job to take over secondary job in the franchise to help out as I would be only employee. 
So I help out and reach out to friends with same skill set as myself so they can take his position and he gets to keep his high paying job. Let's call owner D for douche and my friends G1 and G2. Current story, myself and G1 get hired, no contract yet, important, to start advertising and walking around with flyers to advertise the new franchise. G1 quits their other job because of assurances of shifts, money, work with the franchise. During this advertising we get asked by the local council to move on as it's illegal under those laws to do what we were doing but with a permit it would be legal. Pass this on to D and move on from the area. G2 was interviewed and promised a job and work that myself and G1 were already doing. They were waiting on schedules and contracts to start but D was delaying and not answering phone calls. After the first venture to advertise I find out from G1 that D has decided to replace her three years of study and four years of experience with a 18 year old girl three weeks study and no experience. And D has also been ducking my calls about this and the council. This being a job that G1 had left her only source of income for that fell totally down because D likes young dumb things. G1 was young and attractive but smart. Activate anger stage 1. G2 was not contacted at all for weeks until the same afternoon that G1 was let go. Telling her after guaranteeing a job that she would not be able to work for them after all and apparently D was relying on me to fill shifts with the young dumb thing. All of this he was doing behind my back after I had gone out of my way so many times to help him, including getting these girls on board and as putting many things on hold to help him. Anger Stage 2 Before I had found out what he had done to G1 and G2D had tried to get me to do the exact same thing with the flyers in a close region. I had protested as I had already been asked to leave the area before and D responded with what's the worst they could do? Send me a letter? He was pushing very hard so I went and looked up the law. I found out going back there especially after a warning I could be fined $5,000 if not be criminally prosecuted. I told D of this and he attempted to force me to still do this work but of course would not do it himself. Finally, I find out about all above situations and then also notice that he has been out working for his franchise. D, knowing I'm supporting a sick partner and struggling financially. And even after going out of my way for months to help his business out and him as an individual with no pay, he had decided to take every shift where a client could sign up and get commission. Which of course went straight into his pocket when he was already well off from his other job and refused to let me on board to do these other shifts. Cutting me out of hundreds of dollars. So for the revenge. With the work he had tried to force me into I have all the copies of D's marketing materials he would use to encourage business for the future weeks. Instead of blasting him about his unprofessional ISM and general douchiness I decided to email him I got a better job with better benefits. And that I would be passing all marketing material onto G1 so she could keep encouraging business for him. Of course I don't know, at this stage he's been a horrible douche to G1 and go rid of her. He's faced with the choice of either having to personally confront her face to face after being a major dick to her or he loses thousands of dollars of marketing flyers and material. I am a member of a close-knit community within my industry and immediately put out an APB that this owner was a dick and no one should work for him in any fashion and should in fact encourage others to stay away from him. Community is well respected and known within industry. Also should put out a notice to any potential clients or recent sign-ups that they are likely to get messed around and treated poorly by said owner despite staff's best intentions. Last thing you need right as you're trying to get a franchise off the ground end to even break even, which I do know D was having trouble doing, my favorite part of the revenge. The friend I heard about this job from attends the same religious community that D does. I took great satisfaction in informing this friend of every single one of D's antics and attitude including screencaps of him encouraging me to perform illegal activities and him not caring about me being fined etc. This friend is highly respected within his religious community and took it upon himself to inform the elders of the community of how D is not acting within any of the guidelines of the community and will be severely reprimanded, if not excommunicated. This is also his entire network of personal friends who now get to find out just how poorly he treats those he would be responsible for. I would have liked to do more but at least for now it will suffice. The last one is titled, My Mother Gets Revenge on Her Little Brother Via Coke Bottle. My mum was the second oldest growing up and had three brothers. Her parents always thought of her as the good kid but only because she wasn't as wild as her brothers, especially the younger ones, and was sneakier about it. The following story is one of her favourites and is honestly more brutal than any experience I ever had growing up. 
The youngest of my mum's brothers was Jay and he was a real terror when he was a kid. One day at the house when they were both very young, my mum notices Jay sharpening a pencil. Normally that wouldn't be too big of a deal, but he kept going and going on the crank, one of those old grindy manual sharpeners, all the while giving her an evil smile. My mum realized what's coming so she took off running and Jay started chasing her around the house making stabbing motions with the pencil like an idiot. This went on for a little while before my mum suddenly thought about it and wondered why she was running. After all, he may have had a sharp pencil but she was older and she should be able to use her seniority to put Jay to back in his place instead of running away like he wanted. She stopped, turned around with her hand held straight out and shouted at Jay to stop. This probably would have worked except Jay was too close to stop and he ended up stabbing the pencil through my mum's hand when he ran into her. I don't know where the adults were before all this but they showed up and took my mum to the hospital. Everything was sorted out with no lasting damage. I'm sure Jay was punished for what he did in some way but my mum can carry a grudge and she was not satisfied yet. My mum got better and soon after she was able to get her revenge. Jay and my mum were playing a game of tether ball outside and Jay just so happened to have a bottle of coke that he was drinking from. This is back in the days when coke was only sold in those tall glass bottles. At some point during the game it was my mum's turn to serve the ball when Jay picked up his bottle to take a drink. She saw her chance and took it without thinking. She served the ball and watched as it soared around the pole and directly into the back of the bottle Jay was drinking from. My mum was able to play it off as an accident at the time and Jay had to get new teeth put in but once again there wasn't any long term damage. Thanks for listening.